Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek Cool Team Battle Report. I am Phil, the Glacial Geek, coming to you here from Savannah Lion Games in Pooler, Georgia, where I'm about to fight a 150-point kill team battle between my Dark Angels and Harris's Orcs. So the sword that we've got going on here is that this Stampa is inside of the mech shop being repaired. Inside is the big mech uh, taking care of business in there, trying to get his baby up and running to cause havoc on this planet uh, and working on that. But the Dark Angels uh, heard word that this was occurring and sent out a strike force to go take it down and uh, save, the, save the Imperium from having to face against this threat on the battlefield. But of course, the orcs are not just going to let that happen. So they sent in a force led by their, um, their boss mega knob over there to try to go take them out and uh, show them who the real boss is collect some shiny gubbins and some teeth while protecting their idol here to tiny mork uh tiny mork tiny mork it's tiny mork uh, <laughs> that's right there tiny yeah i'm gonna zoom in Oop, right there come on focus focus tiny mork hell yeah uh so that is going to be uh the story that we've got going on the mission we're going to play is we just made this up so we're going to do this because we thought it was cool really like this being a centerpiece on the board essentially my army's trying to wreck it so i have to try to put 16 wounds onto it we're going to use the same armor save there is a big mech with a uh with the um whatchamacallit with the uh the 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 what, custom force field inside there so he's going to have his five up invul save three up armor save tough eight but it's obviously still in pieces so i have to try to put 16 wounds onto this uh onto this stampa by the end of the game and if i can do that if i manage that and not be broken i will win the orcs a whole nother week to build exactly it'll take a whole nother week to build that again so let me set back like at least five to six days. <laughs> um, but yeah, they only work on business days, so they do have the weekend. So that's like weekend a day. So if it goes six days, you know, that's like that's pretty good, you know. <laughs> uh, and there's like a federal. I think that, I think there's like an orc federal holiday in there too. So this is like way out for like a long time. We're talking like plenty, plenty of time. This is gonna be out. <laughs> yeah, bo <laughs> it's, yeah, Boxing Day for orcs. They literally just box each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so they, if I can put 16 wounds and not be broken by the end of the game, uh, the Dark Angels will win. But if the Orcs can stop me from doing that, uh, they will win. They don't have to worry about being broken because they'll still suffer all the penalties for being broken. You know, they still have to take the nerve test and all that fun stuff. But break tests won't automatically fail, lose them the game because uh, the, there's more Orcs. There's always more Orcs coming, and this is their home base. They don't care. They're just going to keep trying to stop me from doing my business. Uh, but on the other hand, if I break, it means that we're going to have to pull back our forces and just leave this thing this monstrosity to stop its way onto the battlefield so uh that is the story that is the mission before we go any further though, let's show you the two kill teams that are going to be fighting it out so for the dark angels my kill team will consist of from left to right my leader who is an intercessor sergeant we then have a combat specialist who is a reaver sergeant with a combat blade we then have a tactical marine gunner with a heavy bolter who's my heavy specialist we have a sniper specialist who's an eliminator sergeant we then have a company veteran with a melty gun. We have a tactical ring gunner with a melty gun and three intercessors. And then for the orcs, his kill team will consist of from left to right, a boss mega knob as his leader. We then have a boss knob as the combat specialist with a big choppa and a choppa. We then have a commando boss knob with a choppa and a slugger who's a veteran specialist. We have a demo specialist who is a knob with a combi scorcha and two more knobs with big choppas and choppas. Alrighty, going over deployment now. We've got my heavy specialist over here. We've got an intercessor next to him. We've got my leader next to uh, over here along with another intercessor. We've got this right here is my uh, company mat, uh, my company, um, company veteran. That's the word I was looking for. We've got my tactical marine gunner over here with the melty gun. We then have my combat specialist reaver sergeant over here, along with an intercessor. And then we have my eliminator sergeant over here. Going over deployment for the orcs, we've got his combat specialist on the side over here. We've got the demo specialist right here. We've got the regular knob over here. Another knob right here, along with the leader over here. And then his veteran used his pre-game veteran move to move up over here uh, for one we'll CP. Right. Uh, so he's down to one CP for that, but that's where he will be. So it happens in the first battle round before adaptive tactics. 
So you get to move up there, and it's before initiative, so we will roll initiative um, now when we roll this. So, speaking of, we will now roll initiative for turn one. I roll the seven, my opponent rolls an 11, so he really wants to go first. So we will come back to you after movement phase for the orcs. All right, movement phase for the orcs here on turn one. His uh, boss knob over here advanced up, as did his knob over here with the demo bot knob. The regular knob over here also advanced. So did his mega boss knob over here and the other knob over here. And then, so everyone advanced, except for his veteran here, who is going to charge into my combat specialist and into my sniper specialist. So I'm going to fire Overwatch here. So we're going to go with the Eliminator first, looking for a six. Nope, nothing. Are we rolling ones, though, because of the uh, Dark Angels getting Grim Resolve? Because he hasn't moved? Nope, move. not yeah. meant to be. And then on to the... Uh, the guy there, nothing there. So no hits. And his charge distance of nine inches gets him into both of them. But you're going to probably maybe have to choose one. You're going to go for the sniper? Probably a good call. So he's going to make that charge right into him. Movement phase for the Dark Angels here on turn one. My leader readied himself, as did both of my dude bros with the Meltas. Uh, my heavy specialist moved around over this way, as did my intercessor next to him. This intercessor moved over here. My eliminator has to stay in combat. And then I'm going to have some charges. So we're going to start with my combat specialist into his knob, or into his commando knob, commando boss knob. Wow, he is way in to him over there. And then my intercessor, actually, he's going to go over to here because I want to get him into charges anyway. And then my other intercessor is going to charge in because I need to get some attacks in there. Four inches will get him in. All right, we're going to start off the shooting phase now with my Melta Bros. We're going to roll them both at the same time since it doesn't really make a difference. They're going to be firing into the, uh, into the Morganaut over here. Uh, not the Morganaut, the Stampa. So I'm going to have two shots. Um, I'm just going to do both of them at the same time because they're both out of six inches, so they don't get... Um, they're going to be hitting on fours. They're not obscured, but they're going to hit on fours, and they don't have uh, the double roll for the damage. So it's going to be two shots hitting on fours. That is going to be one hit. Rerolling ones because they didn't move. Okay, that's still going to be one hit. Strength eight, toughness eight, four to wound. That is not a wound. I'm going to spend a CP to reroll that into a wound there. AP minus four, so he's got his five, one, just one. Five up. Oh, and he makes it. And then my leader over here is going to fire into his boss knob over here. I'm going to have two shots hitting on fours because he is obscured. But he's in rapid fire. Rerolling ones because he didn't move. That is no hits. Yeah, of course. All right, his demo guy over here is now going to fire the non-readied guys. He's going to fire into my tactical marine gunner with the heavy bolter. He's going to have two shots here with the uh, big shooter, right, it's portion of it, the combi? Shooter. Oh, regular shooter with the combi there. Uh, so it's going to be two shots hitting on sixes, though. Nothing. Not getting anything. So now my tactical marine gunner over here with the heavy bolter, who is my heavy specialist, is going to fire into his demo specialist over here. I'm going to spend one CP for more bullets, so I'm going to have four shots into him over there. He is obscured, but I am heavy, so I don't suffer the penalty for minus one to hit from that, and he's within half range. So it's going to be four shots hitting on fours. All right, two hits. Strength five, toughness four, so threes to wound. That is two wounds, AP minus one, five two five ups. Fail them both. Fail them both, so he's gonna take, six oh, six up field of pains. Cyborg. Cause he's got cyborg body. Saves one. Saves one, but how many wounds does he have? He does have two, so he's down to one. Sorry, 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 he didn't realize that it was his, uh, into his demo expert there. He thought it was into him. He has the cyborg body, he does not. So, uh, he is on the two wounds, are gonna go straight through, take him down to zero. So let's see the injury roll here. And on a four, no, he should be, oh, let's see, let's see. Oh, he's just in within an inch of this uh, red piece here. So he is uh, going to take that flesh wound. All right, so now his leader here is gonna fire into my gunner with the melted gun. He is going to have four shots uh, with his custom mega shooter. Or not custom, just, custom, custom. just a custom shooter. Yes. Oh, whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> uh, these are going to be hitting on sixes. Getting one hit. Pretty good. Wounding on a four. No, no wound. All right, my intercessor over here is going to fire into his combat specialist. So this is the guy with the uh, cyborg body. So he's going to have two shots here. Hitting on fours. That's two hits. Wounding on fours. No, no wounds. And then my intercessor over here is going to fire into his knob up over there. Two shots hitting on fours because he's obscured. 
Wounded on fours, that's a wound. AP minus one. Five up safe, and he's good. Got All right, that. so into the fight phase, his uh, veteran over here is going to attack into my combat specialist. Uh, he's going to have four attacks. All attacks are in there. So four attacks hitting on threes. Three, sixes explode. Sixes explode. And then I rolled. All right, getting two hits, though. Yep. Yep. These are going to be strength, what? Five. Strength five, so threes to wound. Getting one, two, two wounds. wounds. AP, None. nothing. So looking for three up saves. Failed one of them. And my combat specialist is going to attack right back because that's what he wants to do. So he's going to have five attacks here, hitting on threes. That is uh, four hits, strength four, toughness four, fours to wound. That is no wounds. Now my intercessor over here is going to have two attacks on threes to hit. That is a wound. He's got a regular save. Four up. Four up. He's good. And then my sniper sergeant over here, three attacks. He's going to have uh, two hits. Here. His, uh, that is one wound. One. And he makes that save too. All right, so that's going to be it for turn one. Um, pretty brutal that I couldn't do anything over here. <laughs> uh, but that is such as it is. So we are now going to roll off to see who has initiative going into turn two. My opponent rolls a nine. I rolled an eight. So we'll come back to you after movement phase for the orcs. All right, so usually we do the moves and then we do the charges at the end here. But we're going to do the charges to get them out of the way of the guys who are then going to advance behind them. So we're going to start over here with his combat specialist charging into my uh, Meltabro over here. Uh, it is an eight inch charge, but he's my opponent spent two CP for Wa at the beginning of the turn, gives them all plus one inch to their advance and their charges. And so move. He, and move. So he's going to charge over here uh, into him. Um, I'm going to fire Overwatch, looking for a six. That is not a hit, and he is now going to need a seven inch charge because of the Wa and making with it with an 11. He was way gonna be in there. All right, so then these two guys advanced in behind him, coming over to this side over here, looking on these guys over here. Then his knob over here is going to charge into this combat over here. So um, to directly get into that guy, he's probably going to need a eight inch charge. So would need a seven on the roll here because of wa seven exactly. That's what he needed to get in. And then his leader advanced up over here, rolling well and getting just outside of an inch of all my guys over this side. All right, movement phase for the Dark Angels here on turn two. My heavy specialist readied, as did my Meltabro over on this side, as did my intercessor here. All these guys stayed in combat. He had to, they chose to. And then my other two intercessors here, including my leader, are going to charge into his combat specialist. We're gonna go with my leader first. That's gonna be in. And then the other guy over here is also gonna be in. So that's where we are. That's going to be it for the moving phase. We'll come back to you with the shooting phase. So now my heavy specialist is going to start us off by shooting into his leader over here. So I'm going to have three shots here hitting on threes because he didn't move. Well, fours because he's obscured. Sorry. Fours because he's obscured. So that's going to be all hits. Strength five, toughness five. One second. T4, so threes to wound. That is going to be one wound at AP minus one. Three up save. Three up save. He's good. He's good. He's and then the intercessor is going to do the same thing over there. Two shots on fours. That's one hit. That is not a wound. And then the melted guy is going to fire into his stompa because I have to. That's a hit. That is a wound. That is not a save. That's going to be four damage. All right, now his uh, demolitions guy is going to fire into my heavy bolter guy with both barrels. So we're going to go with the heavy flamer first, the scorcher. Sorry, not heavy flamer. Same difference. Going to get five auto hits there. So these are going to be. I am obscured. Twos. Twos to wound. That is. That was cocked there. Yeah. Yeah. God, why can't I roll like this in melee? There we go. So that's going to be five, which is pretty brutal. AP minus one. So we're going to have five. Four up saves, uh, and I make them all, woo! And here comes the shoot a portion, nope. no hits. And this intercessor here is gonna fire his pistol into the veteran, that is a hit. That is a wound, that is a save. And now his leader is gonna fire into my intercessor over here, hitting on sixes because he advanced, nothing there. And then here's my sniper is gonna fire into his veteran as well. That is a hit. 
That is another wound. And the slugger into the combat specialist over here because he didn't get charged, no hit. All right, so after like a 10 minute thing where my brain just like shut down, and I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. We're page. just gonna go straight there. You'll, you'll see it, I'm sure Harris is gonna post it when it comes out. So anyway, <laughs> gonna we're gonna go straight into this. I'm gonna spend a CP on Crumpum. All right, my opponent's gonna spend one CP on Crumpum with his combat specialist. Plus one strength. Plus one strength. So strength eight, so with, strength the eight with the big chopper. So strength eight with the big chopper going into my company yeah, company yeah. veteran with the melty gun here. One in your leader. Oh, not, uh, one into the leader, and then three into the three company, into the company, uh, company uh, veteran over there. So we're gonna do the three into the company veteran first. So that's gonna be two, two hits plus an extra one for goffs. Plus reroll for goffs. Well, the six explodes. Oh, the six explodes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So that's gonna be three hits there. Two's to wound. Two's to wound. Three that minus one. Three AP minus one. So we have three. Four up saves to make here. Come on, buddy. You can do this. You know you can. You know you can. I make two of them. So now, it's two damage, right? Yes. It's two damage. I'm going to spend one CP for Battle Brothers, which means that I failed this save. No damage is inflicted on my guy, but a guy that's close to him, which is going to be my intercessor over here, suffers a mortal wound for every damage from that weapon. It's a two damage weapon, correct? Yes. So he takes two mortal wounds, which means that you now do an injury roll for him because he got taken down the weapon. But it's only one because it's one damage from the mortal wound there. So it's one. And on four, though, he is going to be out of action. It's still fair enough, but at least my melted gun is still around. So now we've got the one attack into my leader over here. Whoa. Okay. All right. The one big chopper attack here. That's going to be a hit. That is not going to be a wound, though. And then he's got the regular Choppa extra attack into the melt over there. That'll that hit. is going to be a hit. Need a three. Three to wound. No. That is not going to be a wound. All right, so now my leader over here is going to attack into his combat specialist. He's going to have three attacks. He's going to be hitting on threes. That is going to be two hits. Wounding on fours. That is going to be one wound. Four up save. Makes it. And now my uh, I'm going to spend one CP for up and Adam for my combat specialist to attack into his knob over here who charged in. So he's gonna have five attacks, uh, three base plus one for the combat knife, plus one for uh, combat specialists. Hitting on threes, that's pretty good. These are now going to be wounding on fours. Getting two wounds over here, four two four ups. Ooh. Fails them both. So that's gonna take him down to zero. Let's see if he is out of action. On a six he is. And now his regular guy here is going into regular attacks. He's going to put all of them into my combat specialist. He's going to be hitting on threes. That is all hits. Real good. No explodes, though. Wounded on threes. That is going to be one wound here. No AP, so looking for a three-up save. And he makes it. Now my guy over here is going to attack into him. That is going to be one hit. That is not going to be a wound. My intercessor is charged attacking into his veteran. That's one hit. That is not a wound. And the sniper attacking in. That's going to be three hits. That's going to be two wounds. That's going to be two failed saves. And on three, he takes a flesh wound. All right, so that's going to be it for round two. Uh, pretty brutal, but um, that is just the way it's going to be. Uh, no leadership tests need to be taken here. We both have one guy out, so we can't be broken. Um, and any leadership tests that need to be taken cannot be failed for the nerve test. So uh, that is going to be it. So now we will roll off to see who will have initiative going into turn three. I rolled an eight and a five, so it's going to be Dark Angels first. So we'll come back to you after movement for the Dark Angels. Movement phase for the Dark Angels here on turn three. My heavy specialist readied himself. My leader stayed in combat. My uh, the melted guy fell back out of combat over this way. He readied himself. The Eliminator fell back out of combat. My intercessor moved here, protecting their battle brother to get some damage onto this big hulking machination over here. And these guys stayed in combat with his uh, veteran over here. So that's gonna be it for the movement phase. We will come back to you with the movement phase for the orcs. All right, so now his knob is gonna start us off by charging. Everybody's charging. So anyone who has it in combat is charging. So he's gonna charge into both of these guys. So we're gonna have Overwatch from a heavy bolter bro. That is gonna be no hits there. His charge distance. 
Five inches is not enough to get into him, but is enough to get into my leader. All right, my opponent's gonna spend one CP on here we go, here we go, which means that he gets to re-roll one of them, one die instead of two, which is pretty cool. It's a really cool orc thing that they've got there. Uh, into a six, he is definitely gonna be in over here. And now the burner is gonna charge into my leader over here. He will definitely get in with a 12, woo! And now his leader is gonna declare the, the Eliminator, the Intercessor here, and my Combat Specialist in his charge. The Eliminator is the only one who can fire Overwatch. Does not get a hit though, so here comes his charge. And on an eight, he's in. All right, so now my guys are going to fire. We're gonna start with the Melt-A-Gun firing into here. That is a hit. That is a wound. Not a save. That is not a save, so D6 damage. Six damage, I'll take it. And then my intercessor here is gonna fire into him as well. That's not gonna be any hits. And then my reaver is going to fire into his veteran over here. That is not a hit. And the veteran's gonna fire right back at him. That is not a hit. All right, now I'm gonna actually spend two CP to decisive strike now into the fight phase. My leader is going to fight into his combat specialist over here. So I'm gonna have three attacks hitting on threes. That is gonna be two hits. Wounding on fours. That is gonna be one wound. He's very statistical. And that save. So his big knob here is gonna attack into my heavy bolter bro. Regular knob. Regular knob. Sorry, regular knob, not big knob. Whatever. I, I said big knob. He said big knob. That's your fault. <laughs> I said big knob. That's gonna be two hits, hitting on threes. Threes to wound. That is gonna be one wound. AP minus one, so four up save. Yeah, he good with that fill face. Woo! And now the demolitions bro is gonna attack into my leader. That is going to be all hits yeah, and a six, so he gets a blows up there. That is going to be no hit, that one. So it's going to be hitting on threes. Wound on threes, sorry. That's going to be two wounds. That's going to be two fails. So it's going to take him down to zero. And that three will give him a flesh wound. And now his leader here is going to attack into my sniper guy, right? Yeah, these are going to be three attacks. Hitting on fours. Because he's unwieldy. So that's a reroll. Oh, one explode there. Uh, it's going to be three, uh, hitting on fours, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's a four. I'm sorry. Yeah. Man, man. So that's going to be four, uh, three hits. These are going to be strength uh, two, strength eight. Strength ten. Oh, strength ten. So still twos to wound. Two at minus three. That's going to be two at AP minus three. So we got two six up saves. Show me them filth faces. Getting one. I'll take it. D3 damage. Three damage. That's going to take him down to zero. And that five will take him out of action. All right, now my combat specialist is going to go in the regular phase into his veteran specialist. Five attacks, all on threes. That's all hits, wounding on fours. That is going to be two wounds. AP nothing, four up saves. Uh, he makes both of them. And now his combat specialist is gonna attack into my leader over here. He's gonna have four attacks. I'm gonna spend one CP for crump him. So that's gonna be two, two hits. hits. These are gonna be strength eight. eight now. So looking for twos, that's two wounds. AP minus one, right? Four up saves. And I make one, fail one. Two damage, so injury roll, he's out. And now my intercessor over here is gonna attack into his uh, veteran specialist. That's gonna be one hit. That's gonna be one wound. That's not gonna be a save. He gets plus one to this roll because he is already flesh wounded. He's out. All right, and that's gonna be the end of the turn here for morale phase. We do have a few because my opponent now has two out, so his demolitions expert here can possibly fail. He's basically looking for not a five to go off because a six because of his boss knob over here is gonna be a pass as well. So anything but a five, keep in order. Oh, and that six works because of his combat specialist being there. Woo, that was good, that was good. So that's gonna Order be it. Is kept. Order is kept. So that's the end of turn three. So now we are on to turn four, the possible final turn. Let's find out, rolling to see for initiative. My opponent gets a 10, I get a five. So we'll come back to you after movement phase for the orcs. All righty, so movement phase for the orcs. These guys are staying in combat over here. He's gonna stay in combat over there. And now his uh, combi scorcher knob over here is going to charge into uh, just the company veteran over here with the melt gun. So he is gonna fire overwatch looking for a six. No, no hit there. So his charge distance, that's gonna be in. My combat specialist is gonna charge into his leader over here. He's in, and my intercessor is now gonna charge into his demolitions expert. 
He's in. All right, so that's going to be into the movement, into the shooting phase now. My one tactical gunner with the melted gun is going to fire into him. Let's see if he can get the requisite number of damage. He's got to be praying to the Emperor right now. So here we go. Looking for a four to hit. Come on. No, we roll it once because he didn't move. Oh, Grim Resolve. Thank you, Dark Angels. Whoo, the grimmest of resolves into a hit. It works. It did. Wounding on a four. That is a wound. Five up. Five up in mobile save. No, it's going to go through. Come on, baby. Get that six. Get that six. Come on. No, with the two. I don't think I can CP it. I don't think that's one of the things you can CP is damage. So, oh, man. Two damage. So I'm going to hope this goes on to a turn five at least. All right. So that's it. I think that, oh, no, I got one more shooting. All right, so now my intercessor here is going to fire his pistol, not get a hit, and then my gunner here is going to fire his pistol into the boss knob. That's not going to hit either. Own life, man. All right, so into the fight phase, I'm going to spend two CP for a decisive strike and allow my company veteran here to attack into his knob with the combi scorcha. I'm going to have two attacks from him hitting on threes. That's going to be two hits. Wounding on fours, baby. That is going to be two wounds. Here we go. Two saves. No, one he save. does not. Makes one save, but that's still plus one to this because of his already flesh wound. Into a four. He is out of action. And now my, uh, that's he. that was his only charger. So now I have a guy who charged over here. So my combat specialist is going to attack into his leader. Five attacks hitting on threes. That is going to be two, uh, three hits. Strength four, toughness five, right on him? Toughness four, okay, toughness four on him. So four is to wound. No, no wounds, kill her! And now my uh, his leader is going to attack into my combat specialist. He's gonna bend two CP on itching for a fight, which gives him plus one attack for every model within an inch of him. So he gets plus two attacks here. Five attacks all going into my combat specialist. He doesn't like him. So that's going to be uh, two getting hits with one extra die. two hits with one extra roll because of blowing up with goffs. No, no hit there. So that's two hits. Wounding on twos. That is going to be one wound. AP minus three. So six up save. Show me that fill face. Yeah, with the fill face. Woo! And now my gunner over here is going to attack into his um, into his knob over the regular knob over there. Hitting on a three. That's a hit. Wound on four. That's a wound. Saving on a four. Saving on a four. No, he takes a wound. And now his combat specialist attacking into my gunner over here. Hitting on threes. That's all hit. Plus one explode over there because of his goffness. That is going to be five hits on four attacks. Killer. Hitting on, wounding on threes. That is going to be three wounds. Three four up serves. No, I failed all three of those. Oh, that was... That was special. But after all that, it's yeah. still, it's <laughs> still, good. still come up the one damage roll. Uh, two damage, but that six does kill him. Uh, and now my guy over here is going to attack into him because he consolidated into me. That is going to be one hit. That is going to be one wound. That is not going to be a save. But he does have a feeling of pain, but he feels it. And then my guy over here is attacking into his leader. That is going to be two hits. That is going to be no wounds. Alrighty, so that is going to be the end of turn four. No morale test needs to be taken to anyone. We're both so very, very close to having to roll to see if we have, um, to see if we're going to uh, break. Because we're both, if we both lose one more, we have to roll to break. But now we're going to roll to see if we go on to a turn five. On a three, we do. So now we have to roll to see who has initiative going into this turn. My opponent rolled a nine, I rolled an eight. So it's going to be orc uh, initiative here going into turn, whatchamacallit, turn five, turn five. All right, so orc movement phase. He's gonna stay in combat over here. He's gonna stay in combat over here. And he is now gonna charge into both my intercessor here and my reaver over here, um, combat sergeant over there. So his charge distance. And on a 10, he could choose anybody he wants. Oh, into him over there. Killer. Oh, man. There is no good answers to anything here. But my two melted guys are going to ready. And then everyone else is going to stay in combat. Oh, this is going to be killer. This is going to be really killer. We'll come back to you with the shooting phase. 
Now my melted guys are gonna fire. They're both gonna fire into right, the okay. Stampa over here because we need to get those kills and they're the only targets anyway. So it's gonna be two shots hitting on threes. That is, uh, fours because it's uh because I'm over half. So it's gonna be one hit. Wounding on a four. I'm gonna spend a CP to re-roll that because I need to. Because I need to. And on that six, it's a wound. Five up. Five up. No, it goes through. I need to get a four or better. I really need this. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Ah, with the five. So he's taking 17 yep. damage right now. So I've officially that. accomplished what I need to on the damage on the Mork and I, on the Stampa. I now need to just not break for the rest of the game to try to win this. Ooh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But we'll see what happens. All right. So uh, moving on. And now he is going to fire his pistol into his knob over here. That's going to be a hit. That's going to be a wound. Oh, but he makes the save. And then this intercessor is going to fire into the leader. He gets a hit. Does get a wound with that fill face. It does make a save. All right, so now into the fight phase, my opponent's going to spend one CP on Nasher Squig to have him attack, uh, do on a four up a mortal wound into my die there. Nope. No, doesn't happen there. But you definitely had to try. I think it was a good call there. Yep. So now his uh, knob here is going to attack into my combat specialist because he's the only charger that we have. So he's going to have uh, three attacks or four attacks? Three attacks. Three attacks. And, and you're going to spend one CP on Crumpet. On so it's going to be three attacks hitting on threes. That's going to be all okay, hits and a six. Attack. So he gets to get another blowing up over here. That's not going to be a hit there. So that's going to be three hits. Two. Wounding on twos because of Crumpet. That's going to be three wounds. Didn't need it, but AP minus yeah. one, right? So looking for four ups. Oh, I failed two of them. So two damage. two damage. So he's going to be out. Yes. Oh, with that four, he's out. And now his combat specialist over here is going to attack into my intercessor. So he's going to have four attacks. These are going to be hitting on threes. That's all, all hits one with one explode over there. That's going to be a hit. These are going to be hitting wounding on threes now. That is going to be four wounds, four AP minus ones. Two damage apiece, so if I fail any of these, it takes an injury roll. But I make them all, woo! Oh, now he has this Choppa attack in here. That's not gonna hit. And now my intercessor over here is gonna attack into his leader. That's gonna be no hits. And his leader's gonna uh, return the, uh, the favor over there. That's going to be one two hit. Hit, one hit, but uh, getting to re -roll, uh, roll another attack because of Goffs. blowing up their goffs. And then these are going to be twos to wound. Both. That's two wounds, six up saves. Making neither of them. So the first one, D3, right? Yep. Does one. And then the second one does one. So it's still going to take him down to zeros, but it's only one damage at roll. But a six is out. And then he's going to consolidate into my melted guy there. Does not get any hits. So. And then, uh, no, I don't think that intercessor did. Thank you. And then this intercessor is going to attack into as well. That's going to be two hits. That's going to be one wound. That's a save, though. All right, so now into the morale phase. This is key because I could possibly break. If I break, that's GG. Game over. Game over. They managed to overwhelm me, and we did not get the victory we needed. So my company veteran has leadership of eight. Can I pass an eight leadership to not break? Oh, come on, come on, low dice, low dice. Oh, just enough. If the company veteran was dead, I would have broken. Oh boy. But now, oh, I roll, I roll now. You did the last one, I will roll. On a four up, we go on to a final turn six, which could be brutal, <laughs> could be catastrophic. So we're gonna find out what happens here. Here we go, come on. Roll low again. <laughs> Come on, end the game. On a two, that is the game over. Oh, man, with a victory for the Dark Angels, managing to put the damage we needed to onto the Stampa and surviving. So at this point, we just managed to, we get the signal, get out of there. We run out this way into an awaiting Thunderhawk who takes us away to uh, safety. 
as uh, as we get the safe there. Oh man, that was fun. That was a ton of fun. It's super close. Like at the beginning when I didn't put any damage onto him with the two melted shots, I was like, oh, I think I'm in trouble here. And then he got like right into my mitts. And then I had to do like the strategic fallbacks to try to protect my guys to get any shots onto it. Oh, make the melt his last to get those shots. Oh, that was killer. And then to roll an eight on the leadership with just the one guy with the eight, exactly what I needed was killer, killer, killer. But a ton of fun, a ton of fun. So I hope you guys have all enjoyed this. I certainly have. I have been Phil the Glacial Geek as always. My opponent's been Harris. And until next time, have fun.